it's part bonding with board games. We got ham tag. Ham tag. We're here. That's right. Half as much, twice as good. Half as much, twice as good as what ham tag stands for. Now this time we're doing top five series war game series. Now everybody's when we get into these more funky kind of titles. Yours could be a little different from mine, mm -hmm. and so on. So maybe mm -hmm. we'll all explain as we go. Yeah. I'll go ahead and kick off. Mine is schizophrenic, so I can't really say it's exactly down this line because I've got one that's going to be different from the rest. Okay. So, and Good. when we hit it, you will know it. Which my, one, my which, number, which one is different? Which one is not like the others? It's there you this go. One. There you go. Although this one is unique to me, Zombie Side is my number five. This is a bunch of minis on a map. It's conflict. It's tactical. It's it's more a mirror trash war game than anything Judd would ever play. I played it. You? I oh, really? It a few times. Oh, yeah. I didn't Zombies, think Judd would even play. It. He's, he's, I know he's, Greg would He's play a trash. Look, it, it okay. doesn't have it doesn't have we beige and honest. cubes and. Wow, I didn't even think you. Would. Yeah. I knew. I well. Yeah. Greg, tell me you've got twelve games of this in. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Go no, on. You got your own. <laughs> he, he has all the expansions. He's, he's, he's making fan-made scenarios for it. Is what there he's doing. Go. It's like his new ASL Zombie Side. It's Z something. All right. Well, so you got it. it is Ameritrash. Here's what it does. If you like the old B zombie movies and the press of the Horde, that's what this gives you. It, it feels movie esque. On the board, you feel the press of the zombies coming, and there's a few game mechanics that are a little mm, wonky, but it brings out that thematic B-movie feel, and they've got Zombie Side 2, which then adds in a whole prison thing, and they've got Zombie Side 3, which adds in a root morgue. And then they've even morphed it into, they wanted to grab on to all the fantasy lovers of uh, elves and dwarves and everything else. So they moved into Black Plague and took it into okay. medieval times. And I would not be shocked at all if they went into space. Just saying. They should go into space. And Jason the X. They should do that too. Um, cool mini or not, um, this game... Uh, one of many, but this really blew up Cool Mini or Not. They now call themselves Simon. Simon, I always say it wrong. And they bought, they've been licensing, I guess, Zombie Side. They bought the entire rights to it. So it was kind of interesting, even from a business sense, um, what Zombie Side did for them. Does, um, does, does this uh, differentiate the zombie killers? Is there a difference between, or, or are you basically playing generic characters? No, they have specialties. Yep, they have specialties. They'll, uh, they have their skills that can attach that they can okay. level up as they go, which okay, is going to so be unique on a card. And they'll, gen they not generally, they will start with something. It could be they start with a certain kind of weapons, or they start with a certain kind of skill. Um, and then do these, is, uh, is the... Uh, I'll say best way to play these a scenario or a campaign I like to do one-offs they have the scenarios that also campaign okay so they can, and, can do both okay yes. and uh, they even come up with uh, the the third edition even had where you can you can have uh, humans against humans just like okay. The Walking Dead where the zombies aren't really the biggest okay. threat, it's other people. Okay. Um, and then they've built in, there's, you know, in each of the versions, different zombies that do okay. completely different things. And okay. it's going to be, you might have it set that down over there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <clears throat> All right, do we want to continue to roll? You, you Let's pick. roll. Okay. All right. My That's number we roll. five roll is the Battles of the American Revolution series from GMT. It started with Saratoga. Um, eight games in at Saratoga. Brandywine, Guilford, Monmouth, Germantown, Savannah, Pensacola, and Newtown with another one on the P500 involving Rhode Island. Um, best one in the series, if you ask me, is Monmouth. Biggest one, most evenly matched sides. They're well-balanced games, but as far as the military forces, it's the biggest battle in the war. Um, it's a great system. Saratoga was created with Saratoga. 
it has a very strong feel for how the American Revolution was fought, where you were, where it was more about morale than casualties. Um, and the system's been pretty flexible. The only thing I didn't think it worked well in was Guilford, and that was because the American defensive rifle tactics changed at cow pins. And I, when I played, I said this isn't this isn't right. But it's two games in one. The back one, I think, Utah Falls, and it's a really good one. But um, the system is really, really well done. I own um, Saratoga Brandywine, used to have Guilford, traded at Monmouth, Germantown. Um, I do not have the other three. That's why I have it five, because I, a few of them I don't have or really weren't interested in. But they are really good. And as far as the out of print thing, um, Saratoga, when it came out, I mean, it, it had a lot, but Guilford and Brandywine were very, very hard to get, and the P500 did not move for years on that thing. So they packaged up Saratoga, Guilford, and Brandywine into a three-pack. We're on December 8th now, so it was less than two months ago. They they shipped those things, so they're still very much to be had. Hold I don't on. know. Hmm? Ham tag. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Keep going. No, I'm not doing two I, games. This is the series. I know, I just ham tagged. Oh, okay. Now it's going to sell. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, okay. There you oh, go. I couldn't figure I that one out either. I know, even you, okay. I thought for sure you'd be with me. And then I was like, wow, I'm, I'm way off the reservation. Yeah. The, now um, we'll remember that from now on. Okay. Ham tag. Yeah, I don't know if Monmouth and German, I think they can still be found. Also, if you're looking for them, for try them out to see what it's like. When people upgrade, a lot of them would have like Saratoga and not have the other. So when they got it, they had spare copies. If you check Facebook Marketplace, pay it for it. I've been seeing them go on the Facebook Marketplace for like $20. And you can tell, yeah, that guy just upgraded. Because um, they used to go for good coin. Um, so anyways, very easy to be had. And like I said, if you want to try just one of them out, my recommendation is Monmouth. I'm probably in the minority, but I really thought it was the best one of them. Anyways, that's my number five. Um, Mark Miklos, the guy who created this series. I don't think he designed them all, though. And that's Battles of the American Revolution by GMT. Okay, and my number five is the Engulfed series by GMT. Europe Engulfed and Asia Engulfed. They're the <coughs> entire European front of World War II, uh, Asian front of World War II in a block format. Uh, blocks like in a... Europe and Gulf, the blocks are the land units, but air, air units, naval units are, are represented by counters. So you're aware where those have been allocated, you know, like in block games, you know how many are there, but you don't know what kind are there. It handles types, infantry versus armor, elite versus non-elite. Um, it does all of those things. It handles the strategy well in, in a, Asia engulfed, how, how land-based air controls areas in Europe engulfed, how uh, the role that Italy and, and why did they fight, you know, gives you an incentive to fight for a while in, in uh, North Africa. I'm not a big block game players, but I, I think that these work at, the blocks work at this level is why I really like them. Um, and I, and I do like, it's been copied now into some of the other games, but the special actions, you get a certain number of special actions. That's how you can do invasions. That's how you might be able to do a move and then shoot. You know, there are, uh, the special actions give you initiatives at, that you can use when it's a key moment. So for me, my number five best series are the engulf series by GMT. Hmm. I think Asian Gulf is one of the two best block games I ever played. I I like. I think you prefer Europe, and I prefer Asia there. But it's a it is. A very I like good a, I like them both. Uh, it kind of depends. I have to be in the right mood because um, the the land war of uh, Europe and Gulf is easier to pick up cold, mm -hmm. whereas I have to read up and refresh when I do Asia and go. Yeah, because it's got a pretty clever supply system and the whole right. way you build units up. Right. It's, the way it's you really do, got you, a lot of the clever way you ideas. Do, the way it handles the oil, mm -hmm. the oil track. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is my schizophrenic series. See, look at Judd. Look at Judd's face. Series well, Judd, one. <laughs> where did, where did the, this come out of? Are you familiar with Warfrog and Martin Wallace? Is this the subscription series? And he did his subscriptions. Okay. So what you had was 
uh, Tinner's Trail, After the Flood, Steel Driver, Waterloo. He then stops calling of them War Frog, changes it to Flying Frog or Tree Frog. Tree sorry, Frog tree for a frog. while. Yeah. And then he still does another run of four on the uh, for, or subscription because that's when I jump on and I grab Automobile Last Train to Wins Winsley, I can never say it, Winsleydale, God's Playground, and... Gettysburg. Okay. What he did that what was interesting with it that really intrigued me from the get-go was he he kind of teased it early where I was I was coming in and he said, Hey, you're gonna get automobile and then there's gonna be some other games, but you're gonna get a real good break and a numbered deal on the back if you come on and back the entire subscription. Now it didn't work well for him, and this still says Warfrog on the back, because one of the things that he aired with most as a series was that included shipping and shipping in the uk went way up and he was stuck where everybody had paid about it you know a year prior and it didn't go well for him and i think he realized can't do that um kickstarter learned the same thing a lot of people would say shipping included and then they found out that that glory to rome yeah that'll eat up your profits real quick so they they just said hey we got to charge shipping um so this is my weird one as a series of course they're not in their series like the rest of mine will be, like many of your other ones are. But I would have never picked this up. I, as, as I talked to you guys, I, I hadn't even tried it until I'd played it with you. Um, American Civil War really wasn't my wheelhouse at the time. But because it was in this subscription series, I picked it up. And there was a lot in there that I wasn't normally wouldn't grab. Automobile, we've talked about. My father was uh, huge into those cars, but Last Train, uh, God's Playground. So that type of series, subscription series, yeah. um, was really kind of neat. That's fair enough. That's so a, that's not, it's not too. That's cool. not schizophrenic. It's a little out there. From the rest of my list, I a little, a little from the guy who did Screaming Washington in the Sea. <laughs> or whatever that was <laughs> I, I have no rocks to stones to throw at you <laughs> so uh it came to mind and there there you go that's my number four is war frog we'll just call it war frog right? okay my, you're, yeah, we're just you're, okay. down. we're just we're i never said what my frog. criteria was i'm an engineer i have to define i have to define my criteria before i can optimize is what i do um i looked at it and there had to be two standalone games in there in the series. I wasn't going with one game and a whole bunch of expansions. Hmm. So you had to have two unique standalone mm -hmm. games for me to call it a series. Get ready. Okay. It could be different companies. Okay. Anyways, so I, like I did GMT. That, that's interesting. That's that's a good And yeah. if in doubt I went to BGG and looked at what they what they were calling. Hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, my number four is the uh, what do they call that? Um, Civil War campaign series by um, Clash of Arms. I had this in one best played at BGG Con when we did the Civil War. My number one was Lee Takes Command. When he did Games About America, I had um, Vic's uh, Mississippi Fortress in there. Um, this is that series. It started, it was David Martin and Leonard Millman created it. And then, um, hey, I got another one here. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, Gary Selkirk, he, he went with it. These are the other two games in the series, Marching Through Georgia, which is about um, Sherman going to Atlanta. And it's not the March of the Sea. That'd be kind of a boring game. Um, but it's about the battle to take Atlanta. And the other one is Autumn of Glory about Rosecrans moving through, shooting down Tennessee in 1863, taking Chattanooga and then ending at Chickamauga. Um, so that, and then the other, I had the other three in there. Um, if you really go to Lee Taste Command, the Civil War, my number one, and I give a detailed about what how these things play. I love them because I think they do a great job of capturing the Civil War. They're gorgeous. Th this was the different one. The others all have Rick Barber artwork, and he's my favorite artist. This is this is not Rick Barber. It's kind of got a funky map. It works. It's just kind of funky and very 80s looking. This came out in 86. The others came out in the early 90s. Um, so anyways, yeah, that's the, the other, the bummer about it is if you're a solitaire player, it depends heavily on bluffing, fog of war, fainting. So they don't, you lose an awful lot. But if you're a vassal player, there are vassal modules for all five of the games in the series. So that is my number four, the Civil War campaign series. So I want to ask, 
Uh, I was going to mention earlier, but held off, because you mentioned solitaire there. What do you think of, of the Battles of the American Revolution? What do you think of the solitaire play there? Because Love it. Um, there's only one thing in there. There's a The game has um, odds-based combat CRT, but it's mm -hmm. heavily on die roll modifiers. Mm -hmm. And there's a part in there where you each play a chit Your and you go across Your tactical matrix, reference. right. It, to me, it's rock. If, you, if all things are equal, it's rock, paper, scissors. And I just threw it out. Uh, if oh, you have a leader okay. or a flanking option, okay. it offers something extra. But when they came out with Germantown, Joel Toppin put something in a C3I, a way to do a solitaire matrix with a die roll, and it plays well. And they included it in Germantown, and it's a must-have for me. And I've used it in all the other games, and I believe they put it in the three-pack. And it's a great way. Otherwise, nothing's hidden in the game, and it plays. I've played them all solitaire, love them. Right. Okay. I just wasn't sure because of the tactical matrix, whether how you thought I wouldn't have thought of just throwing it out. That makes sense. Hmm. Um, okay, second in my series is the Operational Combat series. Used to be uh, Gamers, and now it's put out by Multiman Publishing. Um, I don't even know how many games there are in the series. Uh, I know the ones, there are ones on Sicily. Uh, there's a couple on Africa. There's one on Burma. Um, there's one on Korea. I, I play the uh, many in the series are on the Eastern Front, and I don't have any of those. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I think there's enough other stuff going on in the Eastern Front, but these are this is a series. It really focuses on logistics and planning. You know, getting your getting supply lines established, and then getting supplies to the point of attack and to where they're needed for defense. The, the series has kind of evolved over there. The last number I have seen is version 4.2 of the rules. But the tweaks, you know, they're, um, I've only uh, been in it for a while, so the, the, the tweaks haven't been all that big. There's a few things that are abstracted in the series. Air power is is more abstracted than in many games naval power when it's present is more abstracted but um these are partly big but mostly deep games you know even the the small learner game i mean you'll you'll spend hours playing it to just get your supply lines your headquarters set up so they can push the supply to your attack points and uh things like that so um and then one of, one of the things, it doesn't matter uh, how well you set up your attack. Uh, when you roll the dice, there is a, always a possibility that you as the attacker will surprise the defender or the defender will surprise you. And then it shifts the combat odds just a D6. So not even any kind of bell curve. So... You know, oh, I've got this wonderful attack. I'm going to be attacking here. No, I got surprised, and I attacked six columns lower after I've committed Ooh. the unit and committed my supply. Mm -hmm. So you learn to adjust to that. Yeah. So Operational Combat Series is my number four series. Um, from the ones you've yeah. played, is there one you'd recommend as an entry point? Entry point, to me... There, there might be uh, some some people say others. I think reluctant enemies because it's one that just came out. It's a one mapper, and the main thing that's in it is there is a starter guide that explains how you go through a turn. You can you can basically play that turn. So you'll see things like overrun. You'll see setting up your trace supply. You'll see moving forward your regular supply. You'll see uh, doing a a regular attack instead of you'll know, see an overrun attack you'll see a regular attack uh, so you get to see all of those facets so that now when you go to the rules because the rules by themselves yeah it's I think it's even harder than ASL because mm -hmm. an advanced squad leader you you kind of understand that if I shoot my rifle at this guy he might hide he might run away or he might get killed. So you can kind of tie that to real life. The idea that you have to set up a trace supply where you're not actually going to get supply, but 
you know, there is a supply line is is more uh, it's harder to explain. So reluctant enemies, the starter guide to me is is the clearest way to get started in the series. Okay. Hmm. So smart Alex gonna put in the comment section case blue. Bank on it. I'm sure someone <laughs> will mention Case Blue. So my third series is Heroes of Normandy, and I wanted, I actually pulled down shadows over Normandy to show how they even did this weird Cthulhu spin <clears throat> that they brought into it. Now, um, a lot of folks do not like this system. It's very Sergeant Rock, comic booky. Um, it kind of even pushes where my tactical level is. They really shove everything on the individual tiles with a lot of iconography and uh, a lot of visual chrome. But I love it. The best thing I like about it, and we'll get to it when I get to the next one in a series, is that they, Devil Pig puts this out and then Yellow is the one that publishes it, at least in the United States. But Devil Pig has supported the heck out of this. I've got Pegasus Bridge, St. Mary Glace, um, they did this weird shadows over Normandy. They've got the regular one. They've got a bunch of different, uh, um, gay mats that they put out where they made them look like they're kind of like newspaper articles on, uh, you know, uh, airborne troops. So, in. so when you say support, you mean they keep producing new product? Is that yes. what you mean by support? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Cause an ASL support would be what? Putting out more scenarios or the scenario or more scenarios more uh, analyses, okay. more more answer, you know, answering questions when they appear, things like that. But you're talking about putting out I'm new product. More product. Okay. And uh, what was interesting was I think when I reviewed this one, I actually said if you can put Cthulhu in this, which is in their comic book realm, please do one in Stalingrad. And I had a multitude of people come on and say it's Heroes of Normandy, and I said, "Hello, if we can have Cthulhu, we surely can have, we can have Heroes of the East, or whatever you want to call it." And Devil Pig announced last year, or early this year, Stalingrad's in the works. There you go. I love Stalingrad. Pavlov's House of the Living Dead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the there we dead. go. Uh, along with Zombie Side Walkers would be good. <laughs> Alrighty, <clears throat> my number three is Band of Brothers series. Uh, more than to put it out, 2011 with Screaming Eagles. Uh, I think 2013 was Ghost Panzer. Very squeaky with two standalone games. There's a um, Texas Arrows, which is a supplement. You must have one of the other two games to play. And then there's a Battle Pack 1 that came out this year. I have it on back order, waiting for it to come in. Um, uh, I've been over this a zillion times. Um, it's everything I've ever wanted in a tactical system. Um, most of your data is right on the counter. You got one sheet of, a, of, of player aids for like um, terrain benefits, stuff like that you memorize pretty quickly. So it's, it's easy, but it has a very realistic for the, four, for the 4S, find them, fix them, flank them, finish them, right? Yeah. Um, and so basically I've never been able to pull a gaming move in it and I've been playing it for years. Um, and that's that's the one I love. I pretty much it killed all the other tactical systems that I had. I traded them off because I realized I was just wasting my time because this is the one I'm going to go to. I'll play I'll play them all. I'll play other people's copies, but right. I just realized I was just using a lot of shelf space when this is the one when I'm playing solo I'll always go to. So that is um, Jim Crone's a designer, super cool guy by the way. Autographed. I got to go to his house and play with him. Not this, but I did go hang out with him this year. Um, anyways, another stop. My number three. three. Um, <laughs> just want to make sure. Uh, so scenario, we you we have talked and you have talked about you know when it comes to things like the memoir uh, command and color series, it's kill this many guys. The scenario's over. Mm -hmm. Does this have more uh, different kinds of scenarios? I mean, take yeah. take. Take places, exit units. The very first one's exit units. Uh, some of them are control. Basically, you're like controlling an area. You're not really killing every piece. Every right. guy's dead. It's it, right. you broke the unit and secured the area. Got it. But okay. it's not. There's no Good. victory points in this thing. Oh, I didn't mention when they redid this in. Um, uh, I think it was. Oh, it's last year, 2016. Um, when they did this, 
um, they went super on the quality mounted boards. I mean, this is things pretty much GMT quality except the box. It's a good box, but the GMT puts out those like stainless steel feeling boxes that are ultra <laughs> destructible. But everything else mounted boards the counters they even put in pretty cool counter trays they went all out on this okay. series because they know this is their money maker i made seventy thousand on kickstarter which most of their stuff does like 10 to 20 15 something like that so hmm. they know they got a gravy train going here okay uh my number three is um it's not really published as a series but is the napoleonic wars series by mark mclaughlin which includes napoleonic wars which is uh, the wars from 1805 Austerlitz to Waterloo, Wellington, which is the Peninsula War, and Kutuzov, which is the 1812 War in Russia. Um, these uh, are these are on my list because they are so they're they're only mildly historical. I mean, some people would say they're not historical at all. Uh, but they're mildly historical, but they're fun to play because, you know, the, the card play is, is important, but at the same time, the, the combat system, which is the bucket of dice system, I mean, we've had, you know, 36 dice against 33 dice, and fives or sixes get hits, and then you've got, like, three battle cards that affect the number of hits, and then four response cards that affect the final result. You know, it, everybody gets involved. Um, most of them, uh, I have a l bit of a problem with Kutuzov, but most of them are, are even that one is well balanced and enjoyable. The Wellington game is just three turns long, so it plays a little quicker. The Napoleonic Wars, you've got more involved with the navies. You've got more involved with the politics. It goes five turns. So it, it's, it's everything in the system, and they do, especially the um, Napoleonic Wars, which is the flagship of the series, scales very well. I mean, it's a good two-player game. It's a good three-player game. If you've got somebody controlling Austria and Russia, Britain and France, it plays well with four. It plays well with five, although... Uh, Prussia starts as neutral and can throw the balance off a little bit, but it still plays well, so it scales to all those numbers. Um, so for me, my number three series is the Napoleonic War series by Mark McLaughlin. Hmm. You'd have Britain and France on the same side, same player controlling both? No, no. Oh, okay. okay. Two players, France and Britain. Oh, okay. France and the coalition. Okay. When you got three, it's France, and Britain, Austria, Russia. Okay. Four breaks apart Austria and Russia. Five adds Prussia. Okay. All right. Now I'm beating my own dead horse here again, but I love tactical World War II games. Mm -hmm. Conflict of Heroes. I brought out their uh, Price of Honor, which is in Poland, where you can actually play the Russians who are screwing over the Polish from one side and the Germans from the other. But... As a series, um, again, they came out with Awakening the Bear. Then it was Storms of Steel, which was Kursk. So they're all East Front uh, first and second. Third game that comes out is in Poland. And they were really moving down that track, which is nice. They've now got a Guadalcanal. They came out with a solo system that was really nice that, uh, that, that is fairly unique, uh, designed by Gunter, uh, Uva's son. And... Uh, I won't say support. As far as putting out more stuff, the negative and all the bad press that Conflict of Heroes gets or Academy Games gets is that they'll promise uh, a game uh, and it will take four or five, six years to come out. So they'll get a, kind of everybody's appetite ready and then it'll stall. Um, and I actually think talking to Uva, it's the success of Academy Games and all the different things they're doing, in my opinion, that's pulled a little bit away from the system. Um, I, I love the system. I know you and I have talked before. I haven't played every scenario in the system, so why would I need more? Um, yeah. But I, you know, I really sometimes, uh, you know, I've never played any kind of tactical system in Poland. Now, I know as an ASL player, I'm sure you've played many mm -hmm. a scenario. Mm -hmm. I had not. So when this came in this version, I was like, wow, you know, it's 
uh, to me, it was very intriguing. Same deal with uh, the, uh, the France 1940. They're looking at a France 1940, the airborne invasion on D-Day, and then they had one in Africa. And they're all kind of just sitting. So, okay. But um, as far as the series, I love the gameplay of it, and, and I really just like the top-notch quality that the series has kept up. Okay. I've said it before on these. These are snapshots in time subject to change. When I started making this list, when we mentioned the idea like six weeks ago, or whatever it was, I think it was October, when you're talking amongst ourselves, I had this at like number four. And then I went through Bardius Con, 30 solitaire games and 30 days challenge. And that just ended eight days ago. So I am very much into that. So it jumped from fourth to second place. And that is the Victory Point game State of Siege series. Started okay. with Israeli Independence, which is one of the few in the series I don't own. These games started in folio packets. This one is um, the Blood Red Banner, the Alamo. They always involve, you're the underdog and you're getting pressed on all sides. Alamo, great, great example of it. Um, and a lot of it is pressure luck with dice. I love pressing luck with dice. If you don't love pressing luck with dice, you might want to try one out before you commit. Um, but they'll take the system and as the system evolves, they add more and more little chrome pieces to it. And then the other thing I like about it is if you don't know much about the battle, they put on the bottom of the cards um, a little history blurb on there. And that's how I learned things such as the Russian Civil War. I knew nothing about that. And um, Soviet Dawn, I learned from that. Um, I'm probably pronouncing it very bad. Is it, um, oh, the French Revolution one. Um, I can't even remember how to say it now. If I did, I'd butcher it really badly. But anyways, I learned about that from that game. Um, this couple, here's a couple of more of the folio ones. These are the Grail games. They are all in print except these two. If you've wanted them, drool, because you ain't going to get them unless you're willing to spend a lot of money. We must tell the Emperor, World War II, you, uh, you are Japan. Uh, Malta Besieged. Um, it's about Malta and how it ties in North Africa. Uh, the second best game in the series, if you ask me. Then they jumped they up. Reprint those. Um, long story. I'm not going to go into okay, here. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. The designers have the rights on these, and he's Got it. he's shut it down. So, anyways, yeah. okay. um, they they have now put these into gold banner editions. Um, they, these and these run about like twenty five to thirty dollars. Very reasonably priced. Really good quality. I mean the. I think the counter's the best. They're, they laser cut, so there's a lot of soot. Yeah, you're going to have to clean them off the first time you get them with, with a paper towel. But otherwise, they're really thick. Really, They make really cool shapes, too, because they are. These are both World War I. This is the Ottoman Empire. This is Austria-Hungary. And what's really cool, this is the same designer. He's the guy that created it. You can tie them together. You can either play a, a co-op game or just, as I did, I played both of them and worked between because you're sharing resources. Um, and then they went to the ultimate big ones. And this, in my book, is the best one in the series. You want to talk about getting pressed on all sides? Zombies! Greatest zombie game I, I ever played. And Shocking. this is Yes. This is Dude, tactical. Does, does it on. feel like... Press of the Horde. <laughs> that was a phrase I caught from earlier. Yes. Okay. Press yes. of the Horde. And it's very tactical. With Instead of you're fighting abstract armies, you're fighting zombies with individual heroes. And here was another one. And this this go about 50. The, the big ones in this series, these big is this and um, Cruel Necessity, which is about mm -hmm. the English Civil War. They, I think they go about 50. And they're on the third edition of this one. Um, and this is Empires in America. And it's the French and Indian War. You're the French. And this thing goes like $32. So most of them are pretty reasonably priced games. But that's also sol these are all solitaire series? Yeah, they're Great. solitaire only. Okay. I think this has a co-op option in the third edition. Yeah. Anyways, this is how good the series is. When we did our top five solitaire games, um, I had the Lost Cause about the Civil War, You're the South, um, in there. I wouldn't put it in my top 12 State of Siege games. And if you want to see them, go to go to my top 10 list. I actually have the top 10 Solitaire and the top 10 State of Siege. I apologize because some people were upset because I did games I like to play Solitaire. Some were two-player and there's some people upset that I wouldn't do only Solitaire. So if you want to see it, go out there and check it. And also, I did the top 10 State of Siege. I've had, I think, 14 of these games. And there's even a print-and-play one out there, Constantinople. 
it was in a print play contest and I'm even working on my own right now. It'll never get published. Really? Never get published. Don't worry about that. But I, no. I might enter in a print and play contest someday. <laughs> so anyways, that is my number two series. I just love these games to death and I played 12 of them, 12 of them during, yeah, all 12 I own during the Bardius Con. You can read about that thing too if you go out to BGG. Uh, my number two is a counterinsurgency series that uh, put out by GMT. It started with uh, Andy and Abyss. There are several games in the series, Cuba Libre, Distant Plane, Falling Sky, Liberty or Death, not in that order, Fire in the Lake. Um, the, the thing I like about them, they do play best with four players. Uh, yeah, all of those are four player games. There's now Colonial Twilight, which is a two player game. Mm. So, and to, in my mind, they really don't scale very well. But what I really like about them is they're all, you know, kind of similar mechanics. They, they have great player aids to tell you how each, each player plays differently, has different goals, has different mechanics, actions, operations. Once you learn to read those player aids precisely, you know, they mean exactly what they say. You can, you can pick up any coin game, counterinsurgency game, and you can play that game. And, and you'll, you know, you will at least be respectable. You'll, uh, you'll be able to, to be in the flow of the game. And because every player, the play is so asymmetric in most of them, uh, you, there's a lot of replayability. You know, if you're playing Indian Abyss and you are the cartels and next you have to be the government, it's like you're playing a different game within the same mechanics. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of replayability, there's a lot of balance, but there's a lot of precision that makes it easy to learn. It's not easy to teach because you have to teach four different games to the four different players. But once they've played a coin game, it's it's easy for them to learn the next one. Yeah, I've I've lost track. Yeah, many of the games. It's I got this new coin game. Do you want to play it? Sure, I'll play it. Give me the player aid, and that's all I need to do to get started. Mm. So my number two best series are the Counterinsurgency series by GMT. Uh, you know, I've had something of a revelation on that. You might want to move the hand away from. Oh, you. sorry. That's you had okay. a revelation. Revelation on it that. A, it was a yeah. quiet revelation. Yeah. No, the I'm still working through. I watched the Ken Burns Vietnam series, and it really got me interested in studying the interaction of the factions. I thought, man, I wish there was a game on that. It's like, well, what, I got, I got one on my shelf. <laughs> um, and the thing I always had a problem with was. ARV ends about to win and everybody gangs up on him and I just could not connect thematically to the United States, the Viet Cong and the NVA all it almost feel like they're coordinating and because it's the king of the hill and it's a game aspect mm -hmm. and it hit me if I don't and I tried to play two players just solo and two right, players right. And work, your, your combined total of your victory right. thingies and I and I was like, well, that takes the interaction out. I thought, right. you know, if I don't like the way players play it, remove the players. So I have it set up at home to play it now. And I want to try just all, I'm not even playing bots. I don't like bots. I'll play all four sides to try to meet the victory conditions. And I'm not going to spite you because you're coming closer to win. And I'm doing my thing to try to win and okay. shake it out. I'm just curious. From I'm going less from a game aspect, more from a historical study aspect. Okay. And I thought... That might be, and I don't really have a lot of great desire for Cuba Libre because it's not a topic of interest, but the American Revolution one I have, and I'm like, i kind of interested in that now just as a solo game, right. purely solo. We're seeing right. how they're designed, but hmm. works for me. Okay. So my number one series, <clears throat> again, not a surprise, but Ambush, and I've got the Purple Heart uh, module that's out. These are modules, mm -hmm. expansions. Um, First series, uh, second game that I ever owned was Ambush after B-17 Queen of the Skies. They're a choose-your-own-adventure, again, in tactical, but in a uh, in a definite comic book Sergeant Rock style. I mean, the, the picture says it all. I think he's on top of a Mark IV throwing a grenade in um, with Germans all around. But 
it gives you that storyline feel, but you're able to pick the tactics you want to use, and then things happen to you as you move around the map and you move in and out of conditions. And as they put more of these out, uh, I think this is one of the reasons I subscribed to the general. I wanted to get more information on Ambush. When's the next game coming out? What else is out there? Anything else? It got me interested in even how are they doing some of these different games. Um, and this is by far my favorite system. And once you played it, it was like a choose your own adventure uh, game. I could go back now and I wouldn't know what was going on, but you definitely can't go replay right, right away. If you play it right away, so you're going to be like, later. Yeah, I'm going to just destroy this thing. Right. So you were very incumbent on getting these new modules as they, uh, as they Which came is, out. To go back to things we've talked about before, that's why I believe it's difficult to replay legacy games. Sure. Because, yeah, if, if, assuming you haven't torn up the card or papered over everything, you know, you can't replay it from scratch because you know it's going to happen. I tried to play Ambush at my previous Bardius Con, as I call it, uh, three three years ago. Well, and it's why funny. Why it have that name again? My friend Bardius, this is his right. He can't go to me. BGG Con. He has a teaching okay. job, so That's he right. so he can't take the week off before Thanksgiving and then Thanksgiving. Sure. So he plays solo games during when people do BGG Con. I thought it was kind of cool. So the year I didn't go, but then when I had so many solitaire games, I had to stretch it out to a month. But um, I tried to play that, and I played the first scenario, which I had played like five years before. And it was I was trying to push a game a night, and, and I was trying to, I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this game, and it wasn't coming. And I was like, man, I wish Bart was here. Oh, yeah, do this. And I just gave up. I was like, I had to stop. But what was interesting, I looked at the map, and I go, there's a German there, there's a German there, there's a German oh, there. Could I remembered where they were at. I just <laughs> couldn't remember how to play the game. <laughs> wow. So that's, that's how good your memory is. The that's, initiative track's the only thing that's Yeah, right. that's what was messing that's me it. up. Once I got to that part and he's revealed, you roll, I was like, I'm in trouble. You roll okay. and that, they just go right okay. on. Yep. Um, okay, my number one series is the Command and Colors, and I'm stretching it out. I mean, there are three Command and Colors games, Ancients, mm -hmm. Napoleonics, and Tricorn. This is the Ancient Battles, Rome, Alexander, all that, Napoleonics, Napoleon, Tricorn's American Revolution. System yeah. Series. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, I'm yeah. including Memoir 44, World War II, um, Battle Cry, the Civil War, Battle Lore, which is some bizarro. I own the game and I still don't understand it. It's like some first bizarro. First or second edition? Uh, first. <laughs> yeah, it's like the Hundred Years War yeah. with with mythical creatures. It's weird. Yeah. Spiders and elves. Well, you, you, yeah. with, with or without mythical creatures. Yeah. yeah. Um, the great, the Great War I do not own. World War One, Samurai Battles I don't own, and Abaddon I don't own is a space game. Um, but really, yeah, really, yeah. I did not know about that. Yeah, know about oh, go to BGG either. and click Command and Colors Family, and you can see all the games <laughs> on there. That's how I found out. They, they always. It's kind of like jumping the shark when they end up in space, I think. So, well, I would have thought uh, so, except for Tricorn. <laughs> I unless, had no unless issue. you start there. Unless you start yeah. in space. Yeah. And what's funny yeah. is I always get amazed at how he takes the system and fits it in so much, but he does a really good job of fitting the thematical touches. Like this is very much attrition, and you have to link your groups, and you move slow. Where Tricorn is very much about, there's a lot of flags on it because it's about breaking units and them abandoning the battlefield instead of high casualties. But I you know I'm like, well, oh, I'm kind of done with him now. Tricorn's out, but I'll tell you, if he made one on the War of Austrian Secession, I'd probably be on it. <laughs> I'm just a sap. Um, anyways, yeah. So we we've been I've been over this on many. I think I've had them all except for Battle Lore on my list of on some list or the other. Don't get rid of that first edition. I think I had the first edition. The same guy, um, one, the same guys who made memoir, same company. Is that them? Yes. I don't own Fantasy Flight. I own. You're yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so yeah, it amazes me how much money that guy can make off that system. But I'm a, I'm the sap who keeps buying it. But I don't buy them all. But if the topic is of interest, I have a lot of fun with them, and they solo pretty good. I know there's cards, but there's been a lot of yeah. people who create their systems, and I have my own system. For how I play these things solo, and I keep a fog of warish type of thing going on. And I have a system where, like, you lay your cards out and you roll a die, and you could lose that card. So that way, you're not holding this killer card. You better think about playing it fast. Um, so yeah, solo is pretty reasonably well. And I've played this one. I think I'm on my. F I've played all the original scenarios and some of the ones they put out. I've, I was at 40, and now Rob and I are up to like 46 or so on this. Where now we're going through all the 
the Roman Samnite, Samites, and all those guys. That Sam, yeah, Samite wore them down. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, my my number one is the whole Command and Color slash Memoir Richard Borg system. Here, here, okay. Um, so probably no surprise. Mm-hmm. I mean, Judd talked about Band of Brothers series. Bart talked about Conflict of Heroes. My number one series is Advanced Squad Leader. I haven't I haven't talked about it specifically for a while. So I I wanted to gather up some I some ideas for why it's my favorite system. One of the things, you know, it you you can scale the game a particular scenario and they all exist to whatever you want to do. I mean, there's a scenario that's basically just a a four-turn scenario to take a, send some infantry to take a key building. You've got scenarios you know, big scenarios in the desert where you're trying to use uh, use enough smoke to get across the desert. You've you've got ones uh, in the jungle to to try and take some uh, artillery pieces on the jungle. You you know, tank assaults, just tank hunts where you're going after each other. So you can play the game you want to play. Um, you know, I prefer you know tight little medium size combined arms fights, but you know, you can go everywhere from, like I said, the four turns to 30 days to try and take the Red Barricades factory. Uh, second thing is, is how complete it is. I know people complain about the size of the rule book, but the thing you find out about the rule book is anytime anything, you know, any question gets asked, the answer is in the rule book. And that also, you know, we've talked about in our group, our local ASL group, that it's almost like a multiplayer game. Hey, how do you how do you take a prisoner in this situation? Oh, well, that's right here. This is this is what you do. So it's so complete, but it has been consistent. You know, yes, ASL or Squad Leader came out in I think it was 77. ASL came out in 1985. But it's been around as advanced squad leader for 30 years. Mm-hmm. And you know, there hasn't been, oh, the next edition came out, so we have to change the rules. Uh, you know, I mentioned the operational combat series. They're up to version 4.2. Mm-hmm. There is still the, the, the advanced squad leader rule book. They came out with this eight. They did come out with a second edition, but the changes really weren't very comprehensive. Mostly, it was making bigger type. The next thing is compared to tactical games, compared to most games. I mean, there are dedicated tournaments that are just for ASL. You know, people will go for a weekend, a week, and that's all they'll play the whole time, just going from player to player playing advanced squad leader scenarios. That that doesn't happen with other games. And the other thing is ASL, advanced squad leader, is the beginning of Vassal. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, you know, not only is its own thing, but it really helped the rest of the hobby. You know, I don't know how many of you use uh, Vassal, mm-hmm. probably a lot, but you know, that came from virtual ASL. Mm-hmm. So to me, my number one series is Advanced Squad Leader. It's the one I've already I've got a game and not in progress, but we've already picked the scenario for next week. And I just came back from BGG Con, got to play two scenarios there. So for me, that's the one I never get tired of. Always glad to go back to Advanced Squad Leader. Number my number no, one. You don't have every single module. No, you? I do not. Um, yeah, I've got. Not, I don't even have all the core modules. I mean, there's all the third-party modules that are out there. Mm-hmm. I don't have hardly any of those. I don't even have all the core modules. Uh, I have many of them. You know, for, for some Valor, of them. Right. I've, yeah, I've Beyond Valor. I've, I've, I mean, I've Yanks. got Yanks when it came out. Uh, got Quadigare. Um, trying to think. It was Gung Ho. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm trying to think of the other. Bushido. Kota Bushido, which turned into Rising Sun. Mm-hmm. I've got several of the historicals. I've got Red Barricades, Comp Groove Piper, One and Two, uh, <laughs> Bridge Too Far, Tarawa, uh, Pegasus Bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I don't have all of them because now I kind of feel, you know, what I've also got is a 
box full of scenarios to sure. play. Sure. So I'm glad you mentioned the thing about Vassal because I used to think Tom Vassal made Vassal. <laughs> oh, okay. spelled differently. I had two questions <laughs> yeah. for you. There you go. <laughs> um, have you ever got to play Kurt Schilling? No. Okay. I know he's a big fan and yes, goes to tournaments. Huge. Okay. Yeah. The other question I had was when you taught me, you had this really cool sheet mm -hmm. for the guards counter strike. Is that the name? Counter attack. Yeah, yeah. Counter attack. And it had only the rules that applied to that scenario. Right. Have you posted that on BGG? I believe so. Okay, because uh, one, one page Katie's KSL. gaming corner, she was wanting to try it. And I told her, go check it out. Greg made the greatest player aid, and if you don't, I'll see if he has a copy. So, yep. One, anyways, check it out, y'all, if you want to get into it. It is awesome. Okay. All right. I'll throw out real quick look at uh, DVG, uh, the leader series as well, I liked. So, you yeah. covered Command and Colors. And then the other so. series that was. was just on the tip of getting included for me was a great campaign to the American Civil War, which mm -hmm. was probably close to being on your top five also. I've only and, and I would oh, love to die. I only have one was, game. Oh, you only have one. Yeah, yeah I, I had to have two games for it to count. Yeah, yeah, I mean I just, it, it was it was close. The 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 reason I didn't pick it is because some of the scenarios have not aged well. Mm. I had an interesting one I was looking at, but it came down to two unique games, and that was Starfleet Battles. It's a mo just out of respect because yeah. it was so important. I don't play it anymore. Yeah. But technically, Federation Commander has Romulan and Klingon borders, and I actually that's the one I'd play now. But I thought, well, if you include the Federation Space, Federation right. Empire, but right. it's like, ah, I've got five. It works. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hamtag, we're out of here. Press of the horde. Press of the horde. <laughs> yeah. Never forget. Hamtag. Bye. <laughs>